Hi, everyone. I'm Ruth Ann. I'm Chris. And together, we are Geek Chic Promotions. We're coming to you almost live from Dragon Con. There is just not enough service to actually go live. So here we are. How, how's everything back in Los Angeles, Chris? Anything new? Anything crazy happening while I've been gone? You know, nothing new, nothing crazy. It's the same old. I'm enjoying a nice long weekend. So, you know, it's Labor Day. So, yeah. And I'm just here with my little drinky drink and having a good time and ready to talk some nerd stuff. Yes. Happy Sunday fun day. So as we've been talking about, we've been catching up with all the stuff that we haven't been able to discuss with you guys prior. So there's been a, there was a whole lot of drama around the Flash movie and neither Chris and I even saw it because of all that drama. So we decided to take the time to actually watch it uh, recently. And I'm so excited to hear Chris's thoughts. So for me, I was just telling her I might have made the mistake because I downloaded it to watch on a plane and I was like, I was super comfy, had a glass of wine. So like by the end, I was like, uh, all right, this is fine. It's fine. <laughs> Whatever. So Chris, why don't you take it away of, of your thoughts on The Flash? Because I, I got notes. Sure. So I did not take notes, but I did watch very carefully. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> OK, so the reason why not only the the problematic Ezra Miller is the reason why I didn't go see it, but also because I'm tired of spending money and being let down on DC films, okay? So I didn't want to waste my money. I just didn't, you know, I'm kind of done with that. And the thing is with, with this movie, I, I don't quite know how I feel about Ezra Miller um, because it, it's some like horrible crap that they did, but also um, it sounds like there's some mental issues happening, which would not be their fault. It, it, it would just be a matter of getting help. Um, so that I, I'm kind of torn because it is some really horrific stuff, uh, some grooming going on and lots of, you know, guns and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I, it's just very problematic. So I'm glad I did not support going to the movie because of all that stuff that was going on. But also I understand Warner Brothers like absolute um, decision to be like, we're not changing the flash. Like we're not recasting, we're not doing it. We're sticking with Ezra. And on, on one level, like I appreciate that because you know, they're willing to, to say this person just needs help. They're gonna get the help they need. And you know, we're gonna move forward with this. You know, we're standing behind our choices. Yay for that. But then also, <laughs> oh, well. like, what? Why are we doing it for this person? And you know what I mean? Like, it's 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 kind of like, do do we really need to like, you know, dig our heels in the sand for this? Like, and just, you know, I, I don't know. Like, so I'm I'm very torn on that whole thing. So, but there, I, I wanted to get that out of the way before we actually discuss the actual movie movie. <laughs> <laughs> on its own merits yeah that I mean that's why we didn't go and it's so difficult because even though obviously so many more people worked on this movie like in some ways Ezra Miller had this like when you actually think about what an actor does like they have actually the smallest part of a movie because there's so much more that goes into it so it is unfortunate that so many people suffered because of their situation that had nothing to do with it and I mean like I mean, having Michael Keaton back as Batman, that's a, like huge. Like I wish that had gone over better. I wish this movie had gone over better, better just so that we could have that Batman more in. But but yeah, you're absolutely right. You have to talk about that first before we can even talk about the movie. So, but what are your thoughts? Because we've been burned by DC and this was, and also we've seen the flash and this specific of like, Barry Allen raw dogging the time like the timeline so many different ways so like that's the other part of this too right it's like did we need this story again okay we're doing it but what'd you think also true also true like I I do agree with that because I was like oh it's the speed force like we're doing this again we're like messing around with timelines you know um so it was nothing really that new and he and I think the flash makes a poor decision, <laughs> obviously right out of the gate because, and I, and I get it. It's a story, you know I mean? You, you know, he wants to save his mother, you know, he wants to like bring everything back to the way it was and be normal and, you know, and, and have his family back. And so I get that. Cause that's part of the continuity of it all. 
And so he's gonna be making these stupid decisions to mess around, you know, with timelines. However, like, so here's here's what I think. Like, I absolutely loved Michael Keaton coming back. I did. Like, I loved him as this grizzly old wrinkled dude. I loved him as like, oh, but like I fixed Gotham. Like, Gotham's great, you know? So yeah. I've been retired. Like, awesome, great. But then also it was like a like reminiscent of like I don't even know like like Spider Man of bringing all the timelines together and I was like oh they're doing the same thing or you did like, the or, Marvel multiverse much yeah. better sorry like already did that it's so much better on the other one yeah I agree yeah so and like, I I was a little bit bumped it's so I gotta say like this version of how. Barry wants wants to change because like this is I feel like they did a good job this was the most innocent way of messing with time he's like I'm just gonna make sure she gets the tomatoes and it's fine so like in that regard I was like okay he really did think about it and he like he did try to do it the most simple honest and like like innocent way versus like because some of the times we've seen like the way that the flash and Barry like messes with time you're like dude obviously you were messing with time like that's aggressive but that was like just enough and I did appreciate so what I felt like this movie tried to do was basically the way that Avengers Endgame dealt with time of like explaining like no 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 everybody thinks that like it's a very equal divergent like this but no it's actually like a bowl of spaghetti you know like that whole explanation I liked and having the twist at the end of the George Clooney Batman, who the fuck is this? Like, kill me. I was that that was pretty good. But like, in general, there's just like so many different things. And I'm I obviously we've already seen Ezra as the Flash, so I was forgetting. Did he always do that really intense pose? Like, cause I just felt like there was so much time taken for like, I was like. I feel like there's a good 30 seconds of just like, now we're getting into this pose. And I was like, are we? Oh, okay. This is a bit much. Like that was my first note, <laughs> literally on here. I'm like, oh, I recall. is a bit yeah, much. I like, don't recall that. Uh, I'll be honest. I don't think that was a thing, but it could have been. Yeah, it was, it, but it was, it, <laughs> it took so much time with it. And like, yeah, there was the payoff later when he didn't have the powers and he went into the pose and then nothing happened. But it was like, there was just so much into this pose. I was like, I'm I'm bored right now. Um, that and and like the situation. Can also, oh, go ahead. Can I can I just say like what, what was what was the deal with Wonder Woman appearing? Like that had zero impact on anything. It, so it, I'm like, it's it's true. Like that that was a very awkward thing too because. <laughs> It was just to show that like he's basically the janitor for like the real superheroes but it was it was so awkward even because it was like it was so much like you could tell they had her for a day she only had the one like sentence so they just like did that slow like she did the pose and then like it just zoomed in on her and then it was done you're like oh okay why why that's it that was it and That's she used her lasso truth and they both like confessed a couple things oh about God. her that was you know? so awkward and like it the, was it was super awkward is that like they're trying to finally do because dc is supposed to be the bright shiny universe instead of marvel and marvel movies have been nailing the humor and dc just can't understand the humor because that was not funny that was so no. awkward <laughs> and did now, <clears throat> it's funny because I actually really like Ben Affleck as Batman, but in this go around, was not not a fan. different voice. Like that's I was literally about to say his voice on this was weird. Like he was going for the animated voice, I guess. But like, why? Why are you just the whole time? Just yeah, like, you no, know, like. I can't even hear you. What? Like, what are you saying? Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, and I, you know, I was very pro Affleck for like the longest time on this. And, and this one, I was just, no, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> and I was really yeah. glad he just had that beginning part. And then I, I feel like, you know, for both him and Gal Gadot, it was like, we're, oh, this is it for us. Yeah. Like, like, we're just, yeah, we're, we're done. Today. We're taking the check. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. I even wrote down last of, the lasso of truth was a bit much um there was like 
there's always little things that I'm like, good job. Like I did appreciate there's like the one part in the beginning where they're like fighting off all of the people in the car and like, and then the driver just like, nope, like I'm not fighting Batman. <laughs> I can just roll out. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's accurate. That's, that's definitely accurate. And like, so again, there are parts that I loved this Supergirl. I loved this Supergirl so much. Like, of course, this is a Supergirl that I love. And of course, this is a Supergirl who can't exist because like, that's not, that's not who she is. That's not how she rolls. But I appreciate that like for the split second, she's like, I'm not human. You guys are assholes. I'm going to go check in with my actual people. And then when she saw how awful they were and the fact that like Barry still saved her when they, he didn't need to. And like, you could still see that no matter what, like, she and her cousin are always there for good like she's like all right like i'll i'll fight for the for the good side i loved her i uh oh and the the other version of barry so it was so interesting watching cuz like we've been talking about a lot when it comes to superheroes of like untested confidence and like this kid i appreciated how they dealt with it and how barry really tried not to tell him like screw you you've had your mom this whole time you've had everything handed to you and you're just you're just so shitty like I loved how they dealt with that and I also love showing that how dangerous Barry's powers are like we we saw at the beginning that he's treated like the janitor because like he's just fast what but if you actually look at what super speed could do like damage wise, we were shown that really well with having the Barry Allen that had no respect for the powers and was just like zooming around. And he's like, no, you have to stop. You're going to no. <laughs> like, please let me finish the sentence before you do anything. Like, let let me finish speaking before you do anything. I thought that was really well, well done. They, how many years apart were they? I know that they were um, like the, um, the Barry like four or five, five. It felt like I don't, that they didn't answer that you're right because you're like he's 18 right. how old are you like they never said how old which was weird right. I didn't notice that too yeah and and I did think it was done really well like with both of them because they definitely both had their distinct personalities uh, so they never had trouble knowing which one was which, even with the different hair it was just uh but um, yeah, I, I really loved Supergirl as well. I'm with you on that one. Um, I thought she was great for the brief you know, time she was in. And I also really liked um, when they discovered that the dude inside that's like, that caused this all by you know, pushing Barry out, uh, turned out to be the other Barry who just kept wanting to you know, do it over and over and, and over again and, so that yeah. he would die. Yeah, that was that was beautiful and heartbreaking. Like that that was actually a well done arc. Cause I was like, ugh, are we gonna throw like another villain in? Like, cause I was waiting, cause like you reach a certain part of the movie, you're like, wait, but who was that person? Ugh, do we have to add another character now? Like, are we doing the DC thing where we're rushing and like fitting in a bunch of people? So yeah, that was a nice like closed circle. That was that was really good. Now I'm like looking at all my notes too. Oh, that was the thing that I really appreciated too, was the different language that that, that straight beeves. He's like, beeves? <laughs> what does that mean? Which is so accurate because sometimes when you watch these things, you're like, God, that seems so cartoony. But like, look at like right now, it's like yeesh and like no cap and like all these words. It's like, what? What What does that mean? Huh? Yeah, I've, I've been... I've been feeling that way since like, you know, on fleek came around and like all that crap. And I was like, I, I'm like, there's always something. And they really captured like how old Barry feels. Did I did the quote <laughs> of Thrips Dicks? That like I remember he's like Thrips Dicks. And everyone's like, what? <laughs> Me. So good. Um oh my god and like and that was the other thing because remember he's in the old batman suit when he did the head turn <laughs> to like have the mask like just squish in his face that was such a great like meta reference because like my he can like that was the whole joke that he could never turn he always had to do this <laughs> like just 
That was that was really good. That was that was well done. There was there was the part also uh, with that when he was like creating you know the Flash costume from the old Batman costume where like they show like all like the spray paint and this and that and that and then all of a sudden at the very end it's just like him sawing off the ears and like not being able to do it because it's so tough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was very funny for me. I'm like that actually was very good timing. And I was like, all right, that one, that was a cute one. I actually chuckled at that, so. And it's interesting because like the biggest note people put out there was that how bad the CGI was because like, yeah, it looked like everything looked a little not great, especially when it came to, I did appreciate like having the Nick Cage Superman, like seeing little clips into that, like, but all the VFX people came out afterwards, mm -hmm. was like that was kind of the point that none of the um, other worlds or other timelines were fully existing. So that's why they're like, that's why it looked a little off. And I was like, oh, or you could have just spent the money and the time to do it. And <laughs> like, nobody would have this mm. issue or there's that. Like yeah, it's absolutely. a little bit of an excuse, but like maybe yeah. just do it right. You know I'm saying could, could be that. Yep. So overall, what would you give this movie? Cause like I was like, I went in with dirt expectations. I was entertained enough, but like, I didn't need this movie. The, I was just there for Michael Keaton, uh, honestly. Like that was my biggest. And then I loved Supergirl. And like, there was a couple jokes mm -hmm. here. The baby thing stressed me out so much. Could you, I, I was thinking about you and I was like, oh my God, I can't. She, she knows me and how stressed that stressed me out so much. I was like, at some points I was like, I can't even look at the screen because these babies, I just, just I know the babies aren't real. Just save the babies. I can't deal with this. And the dog and the this, like, no. I'm like, all the babies are going to get saved. That's fine. <laughs> They're all going to get saved. I was hoping that, but, but also um, the I guess, um, I, I think, I mean, you're right. We didn't really need this movie um, un unless like we find out further down the line, you know, that it impacts everything. Sure. George Clooney um, is Batman in the DC universe. Like that's the only reason. Yeah, I have to say like, um, I don't think, I, I don't know. Like I I'm very torn. I'm very torn. I'm, um, like, I, I don't think, it, in terms of DC movies, um, I don't think it was the worst one, I guess. Yes, not the worst, <laughs> but it's definitely, like, especially after going to see Blue Beetle, like, that was perfection. Like, to me, Blue Beetle is, like, top of the top. And now, and then, like, to watch The Flash after this, you're like, well, it's not the worst, but, Yeah, I don't know. Like, I guess my whole feeling coming out of it was like, eh. yeah. <laughs> like, meh, like it's fine. Um, yeah, because like you said, I think it's saved by Michael Keaton. Um, I don't think if Michael Keaton wasn't in it, I, I honestly don't think I would care a shit about it, to be honest. You know, so I, I love I even love the George Clooney thing at the end. So. I love that that's where they use their F-bomb too. Like that's, I was like, all right. Where you put your F-bomb in the morning, and that's hilarious. Like, is this? Yeah. And honestly, I was, I was not expecting George Clooney either. I was like, not. I, yeah, I mean, I'm like, well, who else could it have been? Not Val Kilmer, that's for sure. So. Val Kilmer, not him. Not I mean, him. Who else could it have been, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's actually, that was actually really good. Oh, I guess it could have been, um, What's his butt? Um, Christopher Nolan's. Um, oh yeah, Christian Bale. Bale. I guess it could, but it could have been Christian Bale. Yeah, I feel George Clooney's better. George Clooney's better because like, I feel like Christian Bale is a little too pompous. Like he's a little, like he would never, he would never like just just for that one line, he would not like. <laughs> no way, no way. Yeah, and I, I like that George Clooney had that sense of humor about himself, you know, to to actually do that. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, so I, I, I'm all right with the movie. It, it's literally not life-changing. Like Blue Beetle, like you're right. Blue Beetle, I, I could really talk about. Like this one, I was just like, yeah, it's all right. You know, it's not setting anything on fire or anything like that. It's just, um, I think honestly, the more I think about it, the more I think that 
the reason they're going to keep Ezra Miller are they going to get around these movies that are merely okay like as long as there's some kind of scandal surrounding it like it'll put it in the spotlight and it'll be free marketing and outrage is always gonna sell tickets like it, it will like people are gonna sit there and be like we're not gonna go see me but then like everybody else who doesn't care is gonna be like oh I want to see what the fuss is about so they're gonna go see it so it really does nothing none of it does anything um yeah. but I so I think like if there hadn't been any kind of like hubbub around Ezra Miller if it had been nothing if they had been just a super great person and I'm like yay like I I don't think the tickets still would have been there I like I just don't think I it would have absolutely agree because like I this would have been another Black Adam like this would have just like fallen like mm -hmm. through the cracks because like no offense I had no interest to watch Black Adam but like but I heard about the flash because of Ezra's drama and like specifically for me mm -hmm. like there was a point that they were hiding in Vermont and I was like how dare you don't you dare sully my state get out of there like I don't want my state being known for you get out of there no um but yeah this I, this movie was okay like I was entertained but I have no need or want to watch it again there's a couple cute little bits like I'm good so I don't have a lot of like nerd rage about it it's just more of a like okay DC DC again like it like was a nerd. yeah <laughs> like it's the nerd man <laughs> nerd. <laughs> nerd man yeah no, that's true that's exactly what it is nerd man but like we were talking earlier so Atlanta <laughs> is still doing awesome I'm so excited this last episode was a good like it was a good like keystone episode because obviously we needed to see and like know what's going on with this um hypergate that's obviously going to bring them to Thrawn seeing the Purgles again I was like every time I see the Purgles and I love the fact that even Sabine said it, he's like she's like the last time I saw Purgles was the last time I saw Ezra so I'm like sitting there I'm like oh my god is Ezra Ezra Bridger are we gonna get him soon I'm still I'm curious if he's the dude in the mask though remember because that was my that's my like I'm, I'm because that if he's right there the whole time how heartbreaking is that but I don't know if I told you the yeah. last time so there's another nerd theory out there because somebody noticed that the guy who does the voice for Darth Maul was, is credited for the voice of the dude behind the mask so really it's so like so now people are like it's Darth Maul and I'm like no that's too, I don't I don't I don't think that Maloney would go that far but I don't know. So I'm, I'm I'm so curious if it's Ezra or not. Like speaking of a different Ezra. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. That's, so, that's interesting. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm yeah, I, I did like, I did enjoy, I, I enjoyed the episode. I, <clears throat> God, I just think that the effects are like amazing. Like I'm just, like, I'm just so impressed. But, like that, like the, the, um, like the whole everything that happens in space all the battles like all like like the chases and everything I'm just like like I know they have that that huge surround stage you know that um yeah, the it's in New York I can't remember what it's called but anyway it's basically like um you're in the middle of it and it goes yeah. all the way around you and it, it's like a green screen and they it's can just be like does. really acting in it's it's such a simple name and it's literally just called like a, the, the surround something and it's oh that's gonna we're gonna get comments on it but just go with it <laughs> we're sorry it's early <laughs> early i'm a dragon con it is what it is um but yeah and, <sighs> and it's funny too because like for me a, like i'm more of a fan of rosario dawson as ahsoka than like clone wars ahsoka does that make sense like I yes. love no, it absolutely makes sense. she's like killing it and like the moment that she's like I'm going outside I'm like she's got it outside just like I want she likes no like it's just and I love like and and they're not That's overdoing the fact that it's just it's literally just Sabine and her on the ship being badasses like it's 
and the way that they're like communicating all that kind of stuff, because it's almost impossible to like run a ship like that, to be able to like navigate the ship while also having the gunner, like there it's, I love it. It's just like, it's so much Star Wars magic. I love it so much. <laughs> Yeah, that was a great scene. I actually, I really loved it when she was outside of the ship and she was hopping around out there and just like, like, well, what the hell, man? What the hell? Like, <laughs> like that was so incredible to me. Away, and she's like, "Did you fix the ship yet?" <laughs> like, it is. It was. So yeah, that was that was a great. That was probably the best scene out of the whole episode. Was yeah. her like, you know, with her lightsaber out in space, just like, you know doing her thing like that was that was incredible i yeah that was a moment right there yeah hands down so much so uh we had our nerd rage we have our nerd rave and then um i'm going to since i'm at dragon con and the incredible paul jenkins is here it was one of our really good friends we're going to do a follow-up interview with him since we did have him on nerd rage years ago at comic-con revolution we did a panel that was raging about because paul jenkins wrote wolverine origins the book so we were raging about what they did to it in the movie but as mm. amazing as paul is he was just like I, it, I have no hate this is just what i did and they did something else and we're like i love you but we're here to rage so we're gonna do a follow-up interview with him and that'll be on tuesday as well Make sure you like, subscribe, follow, all that fun stuff and subscribe to our Substack because we have another um, newsletter on the way. Do you want to talk about what, what's going to be in the newsletter this week? You know what? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll find I've out. I've been trying to think about it. And like I, I did interviews for the last two. And if you guys haven't read those interviews, I will tell you right now you need to because yeah, one is... Uh, Two weeks ago, Christian Gossett Villa, and he talked about the writer's strike and also all of this stuff that he's working on. And then last week's was Ray Anthony Height, who talked about independent publishing and Kickstarters and, um, and generally just uh, the business of independent publishing. And so it's kind of hard to follow up with those two. I already know what I'm doing the week after. But um, yeah, so I don't think I want to do an interview because you're going to be doing a live interview with Paul. And so I kind of want to break that up a little bit. So I'll come up with something juicy. I'll come up with some content and and we'll we'll figure it out and it'll be good. It'll be real good. You won't want to miss it. You'll have to subscribe to our Substacks to find out. All mm -hmm. right. And until then, we will see you next week for another Nerd Rage. Bye. Yep. See you next week. All right. Done.